Hey guys, it's uh, Lucas Siegel here, the CEO and co-founder of Alternascript, the makers of Optimind, New Culture, Nature Thin, and Resta. And we're here to talk about a documentary that we were featured in called Take Your Pills, and it's on Netflix right now. Uh, you can go into Netflix and just type in Take Your Pills into the search, and you'll see it. And they did a whole thing about Alternascript and what we're doing, and the movie is based on the Adderall epidemic that's going on in the United States and what we as a society should do about it, how we feel about it, what's going on. Does it make sense? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And then they introduce us as a nootropic, um, not as necessarily as an alternative to Adderall because we're not, but as an alternative solution for cognitive enhancement. So we've had a ton of questions come in about, you know, what it is that we do, who we are, what we think about the movie, and we just thought it'd be a good time to kind of lay it all out there, see what you guys think. So feel free to add in questions as you go, and uh, our team has got some questions that they'll be hitting you with. After watching Take Your Pills, do you have any new thoughts about the subject? Yeah, so Take Your Pills is about the Adderall epidemic and what's going on in the United States. And it shows different perspectives from different use cases, different people, um, different, different perspectives of you know, the doctors that are prescribing Adderall versus professional athletes that take it to get ahead and how the NFL is regulating uh, stimulants and drug abuse in general, and then students. And I think something that I learned from the film, you know, in college, I was constantly surrounded by people taking out. It was just a, just a reality of life. And I think what the film showed, showed me, I was stunned at how young people are taking these controlled substances. Um, you know, one thing is if you're in a college and you're trying to, you know, cram for a chemistry test, um, I have no idea that they're prescribing it to people under the age of seven in such vast quantities. And so to me, that was just stunning thinking about human development and, you know, the development of soul and character um, and who you are as a person. I think about my childhood. I can't really imagine how I would have ended up and what my life would have looked like growing up on Adderall like so many of these kids in this documentary. And so I think that's a perspective that I, that I never thought about and that I learned about. Um, so yeah, next question. So why do I think people take Adderall prescription stimulants and do I think it's a bad thing? So Optimind does have stimulants in it. It's a nootropic. It's got caffeine in it. So obviously I don't think it's a bad thing because we sell it. Um, but when it comes to prescription stimulants, I think people take it because there's a huge amount of pressure in today's society to be the best person you can be, to not disappoint your family, to not disappoint your teachers, your friends, to live up to your potential. And there's so much pressure to be the best student, be the best daughter, son, parent. And the other thing is that you know, our education system is built in a box and it's a box that is really great for a certain mindset, people that are great at following directions and sitting down and, and reading for a serious amount of time um, and that are great at standardized testing and the pressures that go along with standardized testing. But there's very little actual creativity and customization on our public school systems. So a kid who might be extremely talented, might be the most incredible artist that hasn't been discovered yet, might be a great entrepreneur who loves to build stuff with his hands and get out there and go crush it, uh, might not have the attention span to sit in a boring chemistry class if they're not interested in chemistry. And so, but there's a massive amount of pressure for the kid that doesn't fit into the mold to excel in a mold, but he wasn't designed for that mold. And so I think this Adderall epidemic has been created 
because of an education system that doesn't cater to individual thought, that doesn't cater to different types of learning and thinking. And from what I learned about this documentary and what I've learned in life is that when you try and jam a specific type of human being into a box that they don't fit in, that's a problem. And when it comes to Adderall, you know, if you're prescribing it to a seven-year-old, first of all, I can't even really fathom that. Um, I'm sure there's kids that need it, hypothetically, but I think we need to be really careful as a society to think are pills the option, you know, are amphet- concentrated amphetamine salts for a seven-year-old the option, or is a different school, is a Montessori school, is more recess time, more, you know, have the kid run outside longer. Not saying that, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not giving medical advice, but I'm saying that as a society, we need to really think about what we believe in. And if a kid doesn't fit in, if a kid asks the wrong questions, um, it's quite possible that he's in a boring class and that we need to reevaluate the, the lessons that they're learning. And at the same point, when it comes to adults that are, you know, oh, I, I take Adderall because I'm in, you know, my job and I can't do my job without Adderall. At Alternascript, we believe that the human mind is a beautiful thing. So is Adderall bad? No, not necessarily. I'm sure there's a lot of people that need it. But we believe that the human mind is, is gorgeous and unique and, and amazing. But if, if you need to take a pill to do your job or even show up to your job or show up to a class, maybe the first thing we should think about is, am I in the right class? Am I in the right job? Am I doing the right thing with my life? And that is kind of what I hope that people take away from this film, is that a pill is not always the answer to solving your problems. A lot of times it's something deeper and something more reflective and something more meaningful is to, you know, am I going down the path that my brain is designed for? Do I think that everyone who takes Adderall has ADD? Um, no, I know that they don't. <laughs> uh, I think anyone who's gone to college knows that they don't. Um, and I think that the just even the definition of ADD has changed and has been dramatically broadened and widened. Um, you know, where do we as a society draw the line between, oh, I have trouble focusing um, on a subject that I don't care about, and where does that translate into I have ADD or I have ADHD? Um, And how do we deal with that? So, no, I don't think that everyone who takes Adderall has ADD, and I think that that has been broadened to such a maximum scale and been taken advantage of by both doctors and uh, pharmaceutical companies that we need to really think about how much of this is in the market and is it serving the population that it's hitting in a way that's good. Um, when I just, when, you know, when you think about the word medicine, um, to me, what pops up is healing. Medicine is designed for healing. And it's really important to look at what we're giving our kids and what we're giving our society from a medicine standpoint and ask ourselves, is this something of healing? And to make it something of healing, there needs to be something actually, an illness or something actually wrong with the person. And if there isn't, I'm not saying that it should be taken off the street, but I'm saying it should be categorized differently because it's not medicinally necessarily healing someone, it's stimulating them for something that they may or may not need. Tell us about some of your personal experiences with Adderall. Personal experiences with Adderall. Uh, I mean, just being on college campuses and uh, working at hedge funds, I worked at a hedge fund for a long time, and private equity funds and in finance, and there's, you know, I've seen the pressure all over college campuses, the University of Colorado, I went to CU Boulder, and all over CU, kids are taking Adderall. Kids are taking pills, 
And then what ends up happening is they get so amped up during the day that they have to take a downer to go to bed. And it's a cycle of destruction if it's not really addressed head on. Okay, the difference between nootropics like Optimind and Adderall. Um, Optimind was built to enhance the natural human state, the natural human mind. It was not built to mask it. And Optimind is also not a drug. It's not, it's not something you get from a doctor to help with ADHD or something like that. It's built around healthy human minds and um, the human soul. And wanting to, you know, we believe that optimizing human cognition is the future of human evolution. But we think that we need to do that very intentionally where we make sure that, you know, if you are, normally if you, if you go really high in something, it drops somewhere else. And so how can we optimize human performance in a way that doesn't mesh or deteriorate the human psyche, the human soul, human relationships? Um, and so a big thing you know, we promote and the nootropics commun community promotes is cognitive DNA, making sure that you're living within your cognitive DNA, which means that so many, so many people go to, go to college and don't even know how their mind works. And so they study something, you know, organic chemistry, they study finance, they study neuroscience, and they study these things that they might not actually be good at. You know, so what we encourage is before you really dive into something, you know, a lot of people take Adderall because they feel like they can't do it without it. But our argument is, well, if you can't do it without it, there might be a chance that you might be doing the wrong thing with your life. We've got such a limited amount of time on this planet and it's precious time. And so we encourage everyone to make sure that your, your soul, your willpower, and your cognitive DNA, what you're naturally great at, all align with your intention and the time you spend on this world. And so Optimize is not like Adderall, in where we built Optimind to unleash the natural state of being and natural cognition over short and long term. It's not a, you know, it's not concentrated in fetamine salts. It's, it's something deeper. So the question was when we created Optimind, what problem were we trying to solve? Um, so I was working at a hedge fund and being in school when we decided we were gonna invent and create Optimine and, and get all these neuroscientists to help us do it. And the problem I wanted to solve is that I wanted to personally get better, be mentally stronger, stay up longer, be the best in my class, trade better than the Harvard kids. I was a state school kid, not a Harvard kid. And in a hedge fund, there's a lot of pressure to be the best. And so our intention with Optimine was, how can we enhance human cognition in a way that doesn't deteriorate other parts of your life, that actually can accelerate them, amplify them, and make them better? And that's why we created Optimine. How do nootropics fit into modern society? Um, good question. I think nootropics are gonna be really the future. Um, just like a pendulum, I think that it's gonna swing back and forth. But as we've seen with things like the Bacopa and Optimine, there are things that you can do to your mind to elevate it to a state of performance that you want. And I think nootropics are absolutely the future. When you look at human evolution, um, you think about you know, people hunting lions, people going for their food, people hunting and gathering and fighting. And you know, the physical, was such a massive, had such a massive impact on your social standing. And nowadays, you know, as we've evolved and as our society's gotten better, um, it's not so much about the human body that defines who you are in society, unless you're a professional athlete. It's about the human mind. And so nootropics are about 
elevating your human mind, your human consciousness to fit that goal and that vision of your life that you want to achieve. So as far as how I think nootropics are going to evolve, I think that not just our product line, but nootropics in general are going to evolve dramatically because you're going to have nootropics that are designed for, for certain mindsets, nootropics that are designed for certain flows, for certain personality types. And you're going to be able to learn about how your brain works and get nootropic stacks that actually fit that, that, that mold on what not only how your cognitive DNA works, but what you're trying to achieve on this plan. What was the most shocking thing you learned while watching Take Your Pills? Um, I kind of mentioned the most shocking thing from, from this documentary, at least to me, was that they're giving Adderall to, to children of such young ages and that the, the guidelines of who does and doesn't have ADD is so um, broad that, you know, if you're seven years old, you don't even know who you are. I think it's a little difficult to say that you have a certain cognitive impairment when you're seven. So that kind of shocked me. I'm going to take a couple questions from the live. Thank you guys for posting them. Um, so Justin Allen said, do you dot, 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 feel it? Um, yes. I, I think that, you know, people have different caffeine and, and nootropic tolerances. So Optimine was designed to have a 60-40 ratio of short-term and long-term benefits. So the short-term benefits, it's got the caffeine of a cup of coffee, and then it's got precursor neurotransmitters to – replenish the neurotransmitters that are burnt during the caffeine. Um, and then as well as, you know, some of the amino acids like tyrosine are used by the U.S. government with cadets for managing stress. And so, you know, that's some of the short-term effects. And the long-term effects that I feel, um, you know, anything that comes over the long-term, anything that comes over the long-term takes – time and so it's not like oh boom i feel it but the bacopa and optimine for example we spent years and years and years looking for basically bs testing the entire brain supplement market and one thing we found that worked because we found a lot of things that were sold that don't and things that are sold in things like whole foods and target all over the place that are just like you know not not effective whatsoever um the Bacopa and Optimind is really interesting because we have clinical studies. It's branded under something called Team Mind, which was developed in India. And what we've seen is that from a 12 for 12 weeks of taking it, it's got a it's got an active ingredient called the Bacopa side inside of it. And what we did was we're like, okay, well, Bacopa works, and there's an active ingredient called the Bacopa side. Let's concentrate it down, boil it up contract it down, boil it up, contract it down, and create the most powerful and concentrated bacopicide concentrate on the planet. And the clinical studies of this have been incredible because they've shown over a 12-week period that you can have better retention of information, process verbal learning speed faster, recall new information. I mean, just incredible things that you would want in your life, but some of the effects take time. Um, the other thing was um, side effects. What are the long-term side effects of prescription pills versus your products? So I want to make something very clear is that our products are not, 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 not a substitute necessarily for prescription drugs, and that's not how we market it. Um, but it's pretty obvious that the side effects of prescription drugs can be horrific. I mean, we're seeing, like, this overprescribed nation, and now it's in the news because we're seeing people die, we're seeing people have panic attacks, we're seeing you know massive cognitive impairment from things that were supposed to help our cognition and help our psyche and help our soul and help us be more a, a, a better person in society. So uh, the long-term effects of Adderall, I think we have to be really careful with. I think that 
you know, for parents that are giving it to their children, um, they should take it. Before you give it to a seven-year-old, you should take it yourself and see how it makes you feel. Um, because I think that one of the negative side effects of, of giving things like Adderall to children is that they might wake up one day when they're 25 and not know who they are. And I think that's something really real. Um, another question, David Prince said, have you guys thought about doing a children's supplement? Yes, we have. Um, I think it's a brilliant idea. And we are working on building a scientific advisory board specifically for that. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about anything with children, you have to be so careful. That's why, I, like, this movie showing seven-year-olds taking Adderall just blew my mind in a negative way. Um, but we, we are looking at doing a children's supplement. We just want to, you know, it's going to be, a, it's, it's, it's been, and it's going to continue to be a long R&D process to make sure that when we put something out into the market, it's something I would give my kids. It's something that, like, we know doesn't have negative long-term side effects. Because an adult mind versus a, a, a child mind, very different subjects. So yes, and we're totally doing that and in R&D for a child's um, you know, cognitive enhancement brain supplement. Um, it's just going to take time. So thanks for, the, thanks for the question. Thank you for the idea. Um, is there anything out there comparable to your product, or is your product one of a kind? What makes it different from something that I might find at GNC? Justin, thank you for the question. Um, so there's always competition. Um, we have competitors. I'd be lying if I said we didn't. We do. Um, and you can find brain supplements at GNC. Um, what makes us unique? So there's something called a gold standard study. And what that means is basically like the ultimate BS test. <laughs> and what it means is double blind, placebo controlled, randomized human clinical studies. And we only take ingredients that have gold standard studies with over 140 participants in the study, and they have to be peer reviewed by multiple institutions in the United States so that other scientists can rip apart the data and say, this is right, this is wrong. And I think that's part of what makes Optimine so unique is that most supplements in the United States, you go to a GNC, you go to Whole Foods, you go to a Target, you go to anywhere, even on the internet, especially on Amazon, um, you need to make really sure that you're getting dosages within, um, within your supplements that actually do something. So people do this thing called trace dosage. So like Bacopa, for example, in Optimind. The reason why we have the amount of Bacopa that we have in Optimind is because it's the exact amount that was in the clinical study that showed to be effective over a long period of time. And since supplements, so you can see on here, there's this little area called a focus blend where you don't have to list the exact amount of each ingredient that you have. So what a lot of companies do is they just put little trace amounts in it. So they'll put like, you know, five, two milligrams of something in it to just sprinkle it in to put it on the label, even though it's so little of it that would, it would never affect you. And so I think what makes us so unique and Optimize so unique and all of our products so unique is that we take the science really seriously and we built this for ourselves. Um, you know, we only launch products that are completely scientifically substantiated, have incredible research, and that we would want to take ourselves. Um, so I think that's the difference. And some things you need to look at, look for in brain supplements. So I, I, I welcome anyone to go look at any of the brain supplements because I know that we're the best. Um, but something you need to look at is um, – what percentage, so Bacopa, for example, I'm using this as an example, but there's also phosphatidylserine and Optimine that's the same thing. What percentage 
bacopa side or active ingredient is the bacopa in the supplement stack that you're taking. Because one thing is to just say you have bacopa, but our bacopa is a 55% concentrate, which is the strongest in the world. Most bacopa sold is a 10 to 10% concentrate. So we're 5x stronger than anything else. So I think that's the difference is that we actually care about what we're putting in and making sure that it's effective. So uh, the question was, it's been two years since the movie on Netflix was shot, even though it just premiered last week. And what things are Alternative Script doing to promote the message and promote the mission? Well, so we have, you know, we started this company because I think that people fundamentally have the opportunity to write their own story, to write their own script, to take their life, put it in their hands and make use of it. And I think that unfortunately, some of our pharmaceutical industry has taken advantage of the um, power and influence that doctors have and taken away some of that power from the individuals to, to do amazing things and accomplish their mission. So 5% of all alternative profit goes to something called the alternative recovery fund. And what we're doing now, you know, now we've, we've built a good business, a big business, and, it, and it's great. We're now able to unleash that into helping people really achieve their purpose. So just today I met with um, someone who owns Sober Living Homes all over Austin, and we're talking about ways to enhance you know, people who have been taken advantage of, people who have been um, negatively affected by the system that we have, how can we make their lives better? Um, and we'll be, we'll be posting about that soon because we've got a lot of really great stuff coming out that I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, Justin had another question. Justin, thank you for all your questions. You've been great. Um, I want some. How do I get it and what can I expect? How much in a bottle? How many times per day? What's the cost? Do you have variations? Great, tons of questions. Um, so you can go on our website. Um, you can just Google Optimind or you can go on alternativescript.com and we've got a couple different options. You can buy a bottle or two bottles or whatever. I think we cap it. We don't let anyone buy more than six or seven bottles um, because we have people trying to resell it all over the world um, and we're controlling supply. Um, but you can also do a free trial. And so um, different minds work in different ways. And so the reason why we have a free trial is because we want you to be able to try it for free and make sure it's something that you can commit to. Not just a commitment to um, taking the pills, but also a commitment to, to becoming the person you want to be. You know, if you're going to take Optimine and then sit on the couch, um, it's, it wasn't really designed for that. It was designed for, you know, really taking control of your mental health, taking control of your career, writing your own script, taking control of your life, coming up with goals and saying, like, I'm going to crush this. I'm going to hit this goal. I'm going to succeed in this. And Optimine is fuel for my fire. Um, so the free trial, uh, you know, try it. You can always cancel. It's a 14-day trial. You can call in and cancel and um, no hassle, no problem if you don't like it. And if you do like it, we've got a membership program. So after 14 days, we'll send you our discounted bottle. Normally Optimine is like 55 bucks. And with the membership program after the trial, you get two bottles of Optimind a month, which is the, which is the effective dosage, which is you know, taking two capsules a day. Um, and you get it for like $33 or $34 a bottle. Um, so that's kind, of, that's kind of the goal. And um, you know, how many times daily? Um, the way Optimind was designed, the best way I think to take it, is to leave it right by your bed stand. So I have a bottle right by my bed stand. And the second I wake up, so I have my alarm, and the second my alarm goes off, I pop two with a full glass of water, chug it, and I go back to bed and let it snooze. And um, you know, having it in the morning for me is, is incredible. But it's up to you. Like I took two right before this because I knew that I wanted to be you know, on it. And, and, and 
ready to do this this webinar, this Facebook Live. So it's really up to you. I would just say don't take it like right before you want to go to bed because there is the amount of caffeine as a cup of coffee. So you want to be careful about that. And no, we don't have variations yet, um, but we are building a caffeine-free version for people who you know want the long-term benefits but are sensitive to caffeine. Uh, we're also looking at an aging product so that um, – you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, all these things are, are horrifically affecting our entire country right now. Um, and if we can do anything to help, you know, people over the age of 60 um, with their minds, then, you know, I think that that's a great thing. So we're building that as well. Uh, I also want to build like, a, like an Optimind XR, like an Optimind potent, potency, high potency one where – um, people can take it for, you know, if they really want to get jazzed, and it'll be more of a stimulant than the current Optimine formula. Cool. Well, do you guys have any more questions? Um, and if not, I'm going to hop off. But thank you guys for your time. Thank you for your support and your feedback. And um, it's an honor to serve you, and we're always here to help. So check out Take Your Pills on Take Your Pills on Netflix. And uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful week.